Hello and welcome to the Coders Legacy channel. In this video, we'll take a look at AutoPy GUI and how we can use it to automate the mouse and keyboard in Python. Now, what does it really mean to automate the mouse and keyboard? Well, for example, you have some boring, repetitive task that you need to do every day, and there's a lot of mouse moving. You need to interact with a lot of buttons, and you need to maybe enter some text, okay? And all of this is repetitive, okay? So you're basically doing the same thing every day. Okay, or maybe even every hour. And this is repetitive and this is you know, redundant. You're wasting time. Okay, you could easily automate something like this, make a script for it, make a program that does this task for you. You could save so much time. Okay, that's the concept of Autopy GUI and the reason behind its creation, to automate your tasks. Autopy GUI is quite an extensive library with a lot of functionality, a lot of features, a lot of cool functions that we'll take a look at here today. And that's actually the point of today's video that we'll try and overview as many of Autopy GUI's main functions as we can today. Okay, later on, I have some videos planned where we can actually take a look at real life projects with Autopy GUI, like try and automate some certain tasks. Okay, today's video is more about Autopy GUI and its functionality. Okay, so if you're if you have a project in mind, then in today's video you'll learn about the various features in Autopy GUI that you can use to automate that project. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin. The first thing that you'll want to do, obviously, is to install Autopy GUI. So if you haven't, just use the pip install py auto GUI, and this will install it for you. Okay. And since I already have it installed, I don't need to. So I'll just go ahead and import it. Okay, import pi auto GUI. And now we can begin using it in our code. The first subset of functions we'll take a look at are screen-based functions. These functions are related to the screen and your window, basically. They tell you the screen size, the screen position, the position of your mouse on the screen and whether a set of coordinates is even a valid point or not. Okay, let's take a look at this. The first function is the size function, which tells you the size of your screen. Okay, this returns a size object, and you can see that over here. Okay, since this is a size object, we can actually find the width by using the dot operator, which you know gives us access to its members. So dot width will give us the width, okay? the integer value for its width, and height will give us the integer value for its height. Okay, pretty cool. Now, what, are, what else is there? There's the position. Okay, what this does is tells us the position of the mouse on the screen. Okay, I'm gonna put this into a while loop so that you guys can see its values change. Okay, I'm gonna run this. Oh wait, hold on. I forgot to include the brackets. Let me do this again. And now watch, I'm going to move my mouse around. You can see the values changing over there. If I move my mouse over to the right side of the screen, the X values increase and they decrease when I move them to the left. That's because this coordinate over here, this top left corner is where the zero zero coordinate exists. And down here in the bottom right corner is where the maximum value exists. Okay, which is the same size sorry, the same value as the screen size, okay? So just notice how these values change, okay? Y values are low up here and they're at their maximum down here, okay, and so on. Okay, so let me just break this with control C and let's continue. The third function I wanna take a look at is the on screen function. This takes as parameters a set of coordinates and tells you whether that coordinate even exists on your screen or not. This is great for validation, okay? Like you're doing some calculations and you don't want to run, to run into any errors, right? Before sending some parameters to the mouse, like telling the mouse to go to that position, you want to check to make sure that position is even valid. So that's what this is for, okay? So if I pass in 300 by 300 in here, is this gonna work or not? Yes, it will, because the 300 x, x position and the 300 to y position does exist on my screen, okay? But if I do 3000, it's not gonna work, okay? That's what this function is used for, pretty simple. Okay, so that's our screen-based functions. Let's take a look at the mouse-based functions, okay? The first one is 
move to. Okay, what this does is moves the mouse position, sorry, it moves the cursor, the mouse cursor, to a specific set of coordinates. So if I pass in 1500 and 500 here, what this is going to do is move our cursor over to the 1500th x position and the 500th y position. Okay, and from now on, I'm not going to run my code using my mouse. I won't be pressing the button anymore. I'm going to use my keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so you guys just focus on the cursor and you'll see it move. There, see? I just I just ran this code using my keyboard shortcut and it just jumped over to that position which is I which I can see is roughly the 1500th position, okay? And the 500th y position, which is roughly halfway down the screen. Okay, great. But that was a bit jarring. What if you want to make a more human-like movement, okay? Uh, what if you want the mouse to slowly move over there instead of just, you know, teleport over there? There's actually something for that because this could come in handy. Like you want to, uh, maybe you're making some kind of presentation or something and you want the mouse to move there in a way that you can visually see, okay? Or maybe you're debugging, okay? This can also be useful then. Or maybe you're trying to fool some kind of system that's, that can detect whether your mouse movement is you know, that of an automated program or a human, because programs like this actually exist, by the way, that monitor, monitor your movement, your cursor movement, to see whether it's being controlled by a bot or by actual human being. Okay, so if I pass in the value one in here, it'll take one second to move, okay? So let me show you. I'm gonna run this code again, and it's gonna move the mouse over there slowly. You see that? If I change this to two, uh, wrong code, sorry, wrong shortcut. Uh, if I run this now, it's gonna slowly move over there. And the reason why it's moving slowly now, because if I move it over here, for example, and I run this, it's moving comparatively faster, right? But if I just move it over here, and then I run the code, it's now moving slower. Okay, that's because uh, if there's 1000 pixels of difference between its location and the target location, it'll divide that by two seconds, okay? So then it'll move like 500 pixels per second. But if there's only 100 pixels of difference between its location and the target location, it'll move at 50 pixels per second. So this is something that if, if this matters to you, if you want a uniform movement, you'll want to do something like first calculate the difference between the mouse position using the dot position function from auto GUI, from PyAuto GUI then you'll want to you know, scale things accordingly. Okay, that's pretty simple. Okay, we won't look into that. Let's take a look at some other cool functions. Okay, there's the move rel function, which is move relative. Okay, for example, I said that move to the 100 and 100 position. It'll move to the 100th x position and the 100th y position. But what if I don't know exactly where I want to move my mouse? What if all I know is that I want, I want to move my mouse five pixels to the right, okay? Or 10 pixels to the left or 20 pixels up north. What if I don't care about this position of the mouse on, on the screen, I just want to move the mouse relatively. That's what this function is for, okay? So if I just do 50 and 50, and if I run this code, actually, let's just leave that as zero. This is gonna move the mouse to the right, yes. So if I do this, it's gonna move 50 pixels to the right. If I do this minus, you can put my minus values as well. If I do this, it'll move 50 pixels to the left, okay? And of course, we can also use the duration in here as well, okay? That's perfectly valid. So if I run this now, it's gonna move slowly 50 pixels to the right, okay? So that's move rel for you. So next up are the click functions in PyAuto GUI. Now, obviously, when we're automating the mouse, we want to be able to actually click on stuff, right? Not just move it around. So for example, I want to click this button over here, this search button that we see in the corner, okay? So if I want to click on it, how will I do that? Well, I'm gonna use the PyAuto GUI library. I'm going to use the click function in it, okay? There's left click, right click, double click, middle click, and triple click, okay? So I'm gonna use left click, 
and the first parameter is going to be the x position of that button. Where is that button? Now, if you don't know the position of something, you can always first use the position uh, function to find out where it is on the screen, okay? And then you can pass in the parameters in here. This is just research that you need to do on your target screen, on your target software to, to know where that button is gonna be, okay? I already know that it's roughly 40 and 150 on the Y, okay? And let's keep a duration of one, okay? So if I run this, it's gonna move over there. And hold on. All right, it's gonna move over there and click it. Okay, there you go. Now, what if I want to move it from there? Now let's add in one more function call so that, so that it undoes the changes that it did. Okay, let me just go back over there and I'm going to tell it to click on Explorer, okay? Clicks on search, moves over to Explorer, then clicks back on it, great. So it puts us back to where we started, great. So this is left click, okay, you can see it working. You can also use the right click as well. You can use middle click, which refers to the middle button. There's also the double click and triple click functions. And as you can see from the name, double click will double click on the location that you give it and triple click will triple click on the location that you give it. Okay, so let's take a look at one of those. Okay, so what I'm going to try and make my mouse do is go over to this arrow over here, this expandable arrow, and basically simulate this. Okay, I want it to close this, close this folder, and then open it up. Okay, fairly simple, fairly straightforward. So... I'll do double click over here, okay? And double click function, this function is actually pretty useful because often you need to double click on something, right? For example, when opening a file, one click is not enough. You need to do two clicks, okay? So that's why this function is actually pretty commonly used, okay? So how do I know the position of this arrow? Let me show you how I would find out, okay? I'm just gonna comment out this function for now. Okay, and I'm going to use while, then I'll do print pi auto gy dot position. Okay, run this code, and I would move my mouse over to that location, and over here I can see its value. Okay, I can see the value of the coordinates at this position. Okay, so I'll just close this now, and I know my coordinates. So I can go back to this function and I can pass those in. So this is 106 and this is 442. Okay, so if I run this code now, our mouse is gonna go over to that location and double click it, but nothing just happened. Nothing happened, why? Well, let me tell you, the code is working, but there's a slight problem here, okay? The thing is we, don't realize that the click has occurred because it's happening so fast that we can't see it, okay? Because by default, Pi Auto GUI is gonna move really fast, okay? It's gonna be doing zero seconds the entire time. Duration, zero. Interval, zero. And that's why, you know, if I didn't set that duration to one, we wouldn't even see the mouse move over there. It would move over instantly, okay? So what I want to do is actually use the interval parameter, which defines the, du the duration between mouse clicks, okay? So if I run this code now, you'll see that this now makes sense. See, it just clicked on the mouse, sorry, it just clicked on that arrow by itself. And, oh, and by the way, I'm not doing anything, okay? It's all the code, okay? I'm just letting the code run and letting it do its job, okay? So I'll move my mouse back here and change the interval to three, just so you can guys, just so you guys can see its effect again, but more delayed. I'll run this code again, and it's gonna go back, click, then click again after three seconds, and yeah, there we go. <clears throat> so that's the double click function for you, and triple click works the same way, obviously. If I just change that, if I just change this to triple, and if I run this, it's gonna go over there, click once, three seconds fast, 
click again, three seconds passed, click again, there. Okay, so these are the click functions for you. I think we'll stick to just the mouse in this video and we'll talk about the keyboard in the next one because this is getting pretty long. I think we're already nearing the 30 minute mark. Okay, so let's just discuss what we have left for the mouse and then we'll move on to the keyboard in the next video. Okay, the keyboard is gonna be much shorter actually, but still it deserves a video of its own. So I'm gonna show you guys the mouse up and mouse down functions. Okay, basically when you click, it, what it does is simulates the movement of you clicking it and letting it go immediately. Mouse down, what it does is moves your mouse down and it doesn't let it up until you call the mouse up function. If any of you have ever used that old software called Turtle or something, you would, you know, draw, right? It's like you hold the pen down, you hold it up like that. So maybe you guys are familiar with that. So it, this is kind of like the same concept, okay? Mouse down means your mouse is being held down at the coordinate that you pass into this, okay? Let me just pass in 500 and 150, okay? So if I do mouse up, only then will it let go. Otherwise, it'll keep it held down. Now, how is this useful? Well, this is actually useful when you're selecting stuff because when you select something, like you hold the mouse down, okay? I just clicked on it then I dragged it up here, then I let go. So that's how this works. And that's actually why PyAuto GUI gives us these functions. So we can simulate that movement, the movement of selecting stuff, okay? So I'm gonna actually show you how to do that, okay? I'll make the mouse move over to the, what position would this be? Roughly 400 and it would be 100. Okay, then I'll make it let go at that location. Oh, and by the way, I want it to move a bit slowly, so I'll give it two. And pyauto gy dot mouse up, it can then let go. Okay, and if I don't pass in any parameters, okay, it's gonna take the mouse's current position. Okay, and just keep this in mind, by the way. Uh, this rule that if you don't pass in the x and y parameters, it's gonna take the mouse's default position sorry, not the default position, the current position, this rule or this default behavior is followed by almost all of PyAuto GUI's functions. Click, that also follows this rule. If you don't tell the click function, the parameters, it's gonna make the mouse click at its current location. Okay, just keep that in mind. So if I run this code, let's see what happens. Uh, not exactly what I wanted, but you can see that it's selecting this import statement. I actually meant it to to select this. Let's try and fix that. Okay, um, this is gonna be about 800. Actually, no, wait, why are we even passing in, passing in any parameters here? Let's not do that, okay? The mouse is at this position over here, okay? Let's just uh, run it from here. Great, great. Uh, it moved up a bit too much, so let's just tone that down a bit. Let's keep this to 450 and keep this to 150. Let's move the mouse back here and run this. And great, great. Okay, good, good. Our mouse is moving as expected and it's selecting the everything that's inside this you know area. Okay, it started out from here. Okay, the mouse was held down at this location. We went all the way over here and the mouse was let go. Okay, and it selected everything that was inside of it. Okay, within that gap. Okay, everything that it went over. There's an alternate function that we can use instead of mouse down and mouse up. Okay, we can combine this into a single function. Okay, we can actually combine these three calls into a single function. Okay, let me show you. Okay, it's called the drag function. I'll just do drag two, okay? And there are two versions. There's drag and then there's drag two. And this is very similar to move and move relative. Uh, there's move two, right? Which we've been using so far. Move two, what it does is that it moves you to a certain point. Move rel moves you relatively. And that's actually what drag two and drag are, 
Okay, drag to will drag you to a certain point, drag will drag you relatively. So with drag, this means drag the mouse 450 pixels to the right and 150 pixels down. Okay, with drag to, this means drag it to this location on the screen. All right, so let's just use drag to. I'll make it use the left button. Okay, this will give us the same effect that we get using the mouse down and then the move and then the mouse up keywords. Okay, so if I run this, it's going to drag the mouse over and select everything that comes between it. Okay, so this is how you can do it in an alternative way. Okay, I just wanted to teach you guys both because there are situations where one may work where the other might not. Okay, so you might wanna keep this in mind. And yeah. So yeah, that's PyAuto GUI's mouse functions for you. There's obviously still more stuff uh, out there, obviously. And we'll cover that maybe in other videos because I do plan on making some videos on PyAuto GUI where we actually automate real life tasks, okay? Such as maybe operating a software, okay? Or maybe logging in to Chrome on your Gmail account or something like that, okay? So we'll take a look at that kind of stuff. So yeah, let's end the video here. Do subscribe to the channel because we have a lot more content coming out, not just PyAuto GUI content, other cool content, other cool Python libraries like PyAuto GUI, okay? So yeah, I hope to see you guys in one of my later videos. Do leave a, leave a like, leave some comments, let me know what you thought. See you guys later.